Change is in the wind today. Can you feel it? I'm Roxy Zwicker, a published author and storyteller, and I'd like to invite you to take a journey of inspiration and insight with me and our special guests so that you might learn how to start creating a life with more joy, confidence, and fulfillment. The power of one is the simple thought that you are powerful enough to start creating your own destiny. Opportunities float into our lives like waves on the beach, but sometimes we are held back by fear, guilt, or doubt. What if you stopped and took one opportunity outside of your normal comfort zone? Where might that lead? Our guests on the show have chosen the road less traveled and made the decision to live their life beyond anything they could ever imagine. We will hear their personal stories about how they connected to their own personal power and how you can too starting right here and now. This show will hopefully start the process of lifting you up and will serve as a reminder to honor the place you are at. You are exactly where you should be right now. All of the tools to live a full, happy, balanced, and powerful life are right there within you. Let's refresh your body, mind, and spirit with the power of one. Welcome. Your journey begins now. Hi, it's Roxy Zwicker, and you are watching The Power of One. I'm a local author and storyteller, and I am here to bring you stories of empowerment and enlightenment. Today's very special guest is Susan Gorman, and we're going to be talking about intuition. Have you ever heard that little voice in the back of your head talking to you, and you say to yourself, hmm, should I listen to it? Is it just my imagination? Or is there really something to it? And we really want to find out where that intuition comes from, how it can help us, and really how we can tune in to being our best. So Susan, welcome and thank you for being Thanks, here. Thanks, Roxy. It's great to be here. So you are an intuitive? I'm an intuitive, which is sort of the modern fancy word for a psychic, basically. So what does that entail? So um, intuitives and psychics have pretty much three main areas in which they express their gift. The first is clairvoyance, and that is a word that is kind of talking about that second sight. There's objective clairvoyance, which see things that are not necessarily obvious to other people as if it were happening right in front of them. Like if you've seen The Sixth Sense or the TV show Medium, it's filmed as if it were from the perspective of an objective clairvoyant. And then there are subjective clairvoyance, and subjective clairvoyance, um, the way I describe it, is that we have like a movie screen in our head, or our own private movie theater. And so while I'm experiencing my daily life, I'm also getting a series of slides, or moving pictures, or sometimes words, symbols, and those visual images give me information about what's going on around me, or if I'm doing a session with a client. So that's clairvoyance, and then we have empathy, um, which is different than sympathy, and it's different than emotional empathy. Em psychic empathy is the ability to actually feel like what it's like to be another person, to see the world through their eyes. But it also includes being able to back up a little bit from their point of view and also get a sense of what's going on around that person. So empaths are uh, medical intuitives oftentimes. They're, um, able to get a really good sense of someone's character. You know, if this, is this person a good egg or are they up to something mischievous? Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the exciting things about being an empath too is that, you know, someone can be pointing themselves away from a situation because they think it's scary or too big of a risk, but an empath can actually look through that forest and tell you, well, it's not actually a group of bears there, that's actually a tree. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a way of looking at someone's life that's deeply close to the way they experience it, but also being able to pull on some spiritual awareness about it as well. And then there are mediums, and mediums are basically people, I like to talk about being a medium as, well, my guides actually corrected me a while ago and said, you really 
shouldn't call us dead people. It's it's kind of rude <laughs> <laughs> because we're not dead. We just don't have a human body anymore. So mediums are basically the folks who talk to anybody who doesn't have a human body. And that can also include plants and it can include animals. Um, being an animal communicator is basically just communicating to somebody who doesn't speak human English or any other language for that matter. So that's basically when someone says they're an intuitive what they're talking about. And a lot of intuitives do one main thing or start in one of those areas. They either start out as an empath or a clairvoyant and add to their repertoire. And some people are like me and we just do all three things all the time. Now, how did you find out that you had this ability? Was there mm -hmm. something that triggered in your life where you really kind of just zoned in and said, all right, I understand finally what all of this information coming into me is? Well, it was actually a big surprise for me. And when I look back on my life, I think I should have picked up on it, but I just missed that particular clue. From the time I was about 13, I used to just, I was, a, and still am, a, a voracious reader, and I used to go to the library and I discovered this section in the library where they had all these books on ESP and reincarnation, and I would just tear through that section every summer. Um, and any new books that came in, I got them, and I, I basically was just incredibly interested. And what I know now is that I was actually getting prepared um, because I never for one moment thought that I would be doing readings for people or offering spiritual coaching in any way. I just thought it was something really interesting that a certain segment of the population did. I believed wholeheartedly in it, but I didn't see myself as someone who could do that. And um, when I went to college on my 21st birthday, my friends surprised me that evening. And uh, she, one of my friends had a new boyfriend, and I had not met him yet. Um, they were sort of in that hot and heavy phase where nobody had really met him yet because <laughs> they were spending all their time together. And they surprised me by bringing me a cake and uh, a present. And we sat around having cake and talking. and about probably about 10 or 20 minutes into the conversation I was wondering what they had put in the cake because I started to feel very dizzy and very lightheaded and my palms um, felt like they were vibrating a little bit and I thought this is very odd um, and then as the conversation continued I started to get those pictures that I just talked about uh, they were playing me a movie about his life um, my friend's boyfriend and I could see very clearly uh, a woman sitting in her kitchen with one of those old-fashioned light bulbs that just hangs by a cord from the ceiling and she was chain smoking she had a beehive hairdo and if I looked right over her shoulder there was a cornfield out the window um, I could hear a man very angry man in the other rooms of the house kind of on a tear and it was clear that he was yelling and she was smoking because she was very stressed out about what was going on. And Then I saw um, my friend's boyfriend graduating from the University of Illinois um, in Chicago and I could see him walking in his cap and gown and he had a degree in English and he was going to become a teacher and, and I was trying to continue to have the conversation with them because I really didn't understand what was going on and I didn't want to be rude. And I must have said at some point, hey, I'm getting this image. Does this mean anything to you? And I, I don't have any memory of that, but I oftentimes think about what was it that actually possessed me to open my mouth? Because one second before I had those images in my mind, I wasn't a psychic. And as soon as I told that story, my life changed forever. And so I told them what I saw. And he looked at her and said, what have you been telling her? And I, she said, I haven't said anything to her about this. And then this, um, I can only describe it as possibly the most serene and contented feeling I had ever had in my life to that point came over me. And I felt compelled to tell him. He was um, a cab driver. And I said, you have to go back to school. I said, the next four years of your life are going to go by whether you're driving a cab or not, and you are meant to be in the classroom and teach English, and you will be so happy if you do that. And you know, the evening must have wrapped up, you know, afterwards, 
it was late. I went to bed, and for the next three days, I really I had a hard time functioning. I couldn't get out of bed. I was exhausted, and I still had all of those issues in my uh, hands with the buzzing and my feet as well. Um, and I got out my journal, and I sat down and thought, I'm either having a nervous breakdown, or something really important is happening, and so I better write it down and try to figure out what was going on. And it was then that I actually got there's something called automatic writing where oftentimes your guides can speak to you through your writing and I actually started writing down instructions you know this is all part of the plan you know we've been getting the information to you that you've needed for all these years you need to meditate for an hour a day read everything you can get your hands on and anybody who wants to have a reading say yes and it just kind of flowed from there um, and it chased me down because I don't think I was really ready to fully step into it. What do, what do you mean chased you down? Well, the story that I tell after that is that I moved back to San Diego and um, I was thinking about what was I going to do. You know, I didn't really want to be a teacher. I didn't want to be an actor anymore. Um, uh, so I was in a, I was doing just odd jobs like temping and doing admin work. And I was getting my resume done. And I heard some people on the other side of the counter whispering. It was a copy shop and um, something about a psychic, astrologers, whatever. And I walked right up to them and again, just opened my mouth and said, I'm a psychic. And that was actually the first time that I'd ever said those words. Um, and I was, I think, 21 at the time, 21 or 22. And I had been doing little readings for people, but I didn't feel like I was a psychic. I felt like I was aware of a gift that I had at that point. Yeah, we, um, I think that after doing this now for um, over 25 years, the thing that I know for sure about human beings is that the universal illusion that we operate under is that we're all alone and we're not. In fact, it's the opposite. You know, we don't talk to our guides nearly enough and they can help us in so many ways. They can help us even more if we ask them. Um, but we carry a lot inside us that we don't need to. We're meant to be doing this human thing all together and, um, and with the help of the spirit world as well. And when people see by what I'm telling them that they are known to their guides, their family members that have passed on to me, and because I try to do it in a way that's very deeply compassionate, it's a healing for them. It's a relief. And for me, too. And have you seen people become empowered by, by learning that, you know, maybe a, a spirit of someone that had passed was with them? Absolutely. You know, the other thing about intuition is that I'm kind of on a secret mission, which is that, you know, my, after I found out that I was an intuitive, my, uh, my mother told me some things about my grandmother. And it was very clear that the gift had come down through her. And she... Um, you know, she, my mother told me that she used to have dreams that she didn't want to talk about. And I think that we're living in a time where you can claim your intuition. But when my grandmother was a young person, she had to shove it way deep down inside her. And so, of course, it would come out through dreams and things like that. But, um, you know, it's a source of information, help, guidance, and support. You know, people who are comfortable with their intuition are very efficient. Um, now, for somebody who's watching who might be saying, I'm not intuitive, <laughs> yes. I'm not psychic, mm -hmm. I don't even know if I buy half of this mm -hmm. stuff, how do you get them to start to tune in and really start to listen to what's coming through to them? Well, it's not mandatory, of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. But if they're mildly it's interested, by, saying, oh, all right, I'm, I might be willing to try this, but I, I'm not sure. I don't have any special powers. Right. Well, I would argue with that but it is by invitation only. And the exercise that I love to recommend to people is to use the word intuition anytime in the next week. Actually so say- how, how would I use it So in the if next you week? said, if you had a hunch about something that you would actually say that you had a hunch, instead of saying, well, I had this idea or I thought this, um, I would encourage that person to say, why don't you describe it like it actually happened? Like you got a gut feeling, there's a good one. Because there's, in, there's intuitive centers in the body. You know, mm -hmm. the hands and feet are one of them. Okay. Um, that's why I had that opening pop when I was 21. Um, your gut, your heart, 
Um, usually thoughts are fear driven. So for a beginner, I don't usually encourage them to pay attention to everything they're thinking. Um, but dropping down into your heart and saying what your intuition tells you, what you have a hunch about, that's usually a really great start. And I also have a rule for my students, which is they're not allowed to use the weird word, you know? <laughs> because, and I tell people this all the time, you know, if you kept introducing me as your weird friend Susan, I personally might kind of find that complimentary, but um, the idea is that it creates me as this other. You know, like I have all my friends, and then here's my weird friend Susan. That's what we do to intuition in our society. Well, I, I think we just kind of get used to what we've been taught as right. far as, you know, what psychics really are versus actually knowing someone who goes through these motions every day and trusting their intuition. You know, we all kind of think we know what a psychic person is, right. and we really don't. So I think that's a really good example. And I think that we're all intuitive. It's, it's, your body knows how to do this. Your brain knows how to do this as naturally as it knows how to keep you breathing at night. So the reason why it's become marginalized, it's because of a cultural decision we've made. It isn't because of anything that's actually non-operational in a human being. And it's been amazing to me, you know, friends, family, people who know me really well have started to kind of trust a little bit more because they know that I will encourage them. So it's sometimes just having that one person in your life who's going to say, I don't think you're crazy. I mean, you're crazy, but in a good way. <laughs> you're crazy in a good way. <laughs> you're not crazy in the way you think you're crazy. You're not crazy. crazy in the weird way. Right, right, crazy in, the in the weird, weird way. way. Right. And, you know, I grew up in a suburb of L.A., you know, middle class, upper middle class suburb. I went to school. I came from a very intellectual family and then had this bomb go off pretty much in my life just as I was graduating from college, which changed my life forever. But it also kind of exposed that there have been people in our family for many generations back that have been pushing this down. And so it's, it's like finding out that, you know, you had a whole bunch of artists in your family, you know, and they didn't think it was seemly or something, and they all became bankers. Or, you know, it's not a great example, but, um, you know, my kids are really intuitive. Even my scientist husband has become more comfortable with it. And... I just don't think that it's um, something that is going to hurt anything else that goes on in someone's life. It can only help them. So what are a few steps for somebody who's watching mm -hmm. and now we've piqued their interest yeah. in how they can be more intuitive? What are some of the steps that somebody who is watching today could start taking besides the intuitive? I think that's, that's a great place to start. But let's really think about getting them engaged and listening to their intuition. So one thing that's great to do is to get a journal that's just for spiritual, intuitive noticings. And I think sometimes writing it down helps give it shape. It helps it feel less overwhelming. And it also um, records it so that later when you've gotten really good at it, you can go back and see those first courageous steps that you took. Um, so that's one thing. And what I would use that journal for is to write down things that you feel very strongly. Um, and they can come about anything. You know, I, I tell a story oftentimes that uh, when I lived in San Diego, I, there was this um, route that I would take home from the grocery store because it afforded me a really pretty view at the end. I would go up over this hill and I could see the ocean and beautiful trees and I took the same way home every time. And this one day, I got this feeling like, nope, go home through town. And I thought, that doesn't make sense. So I didn't go that way. <laughs> and a block later hit a uh, street where a fire hydrant had exploded, you know, popped up or exploded or something, and there was a geyser about 50 feet high in the air of water, and the street was flooded, and it took me an hour to get home where it would normally take about 15 minutes. So I, I learned that day that intuition wants to help us with everything. So it can really serve us. Right. So that would be another thing that I would encourage people to do is don't discount something just because it seems insignificant or trivial. Mm -hmm. um, because it's practicing with the little things that will make you comfortable to get the big stuff. Like don't marry this person or marry this person or move or go to school here or things like that. 
Now, aren't there ways where we can kind of go back in our own lives and trace? Oh, yeah. At, even at this point, even if we haven't thought ourselves of, as an intuitive up till this point, can't we go back and say, well, geez, you know, that the energies really were showing us the way and we weren't listening to them. Mm -hmm. what, what's your recommendation as far as kind of looking back now on things that have happened to us and how we ignored the voice? Well, I think sometimes that our guides know that we're going to ignore them anyway because it's just not a norm in our culture. So they do other stuff to help us. You know, flat tires, you know, that don't get us somewhere that we're supposed to be. Um, I just, I don't push anything in my life. I'm a very go with the flow kind of person because I know that things are always aligning for my highest good. You know those dramatic stories where you hear someone stepped out of a building during wartime just to have a cigarette and the building blew up and mm -hmm. they lost all of their friends and you know there are ways in which we there really is a path and our intuition will let us know if we're on it or not but if we don't heed that voice things will get in our way you know they'll it'll slow us down and also conversely if there's something that we're supposed to step towards the feelings will become overwhelming. Now, can we ask? So mm -hmm. we have these steps of, of tuning in, of looking back. Now, what about asking for guidance? Absolutely. So tell me, what's the, what's the best way for someone to ask for guidance? Help. That's it. Simple as that. Yeah, just please help. I really mean it. <laughs> I really mean it. Emphasis, I really, I really need mean help it. right now. Because they know that too. And I, I think it's interesting because these questions that you're asking about how would I explain what it's like to be an intuitive to someone who doesn't think they're intuitive or hasn't had that much experience it's been so long that half the time I don't realize how much I'm talking to my guides all day long mm -hmm. or just walking with that um, energy all day long and so there's probably things that are not happening to me because I'm listening that I couldn't tell you about because mm -hmm. I'm not experiencing them. Sure. Um, you know, but I think that's one of the things that I really love about my work is people will come and tell me their stories. Like, could you please bless this story? You know, would you, would you please um, consecrate what happened to me? Because I really think that I don't have any other rational explanation for it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, th I think I had an ex a psychic experience. I'm like, you, you came to the right place because I'm not going <laughs> to tell you that you didn't, you know? Now you're in Exeter? I'm in people, Exeter, people New are Hampshire. Looking for you. Yep, and I also travel to San Diego every other month. I have an office there, and in the spring I'll be going down to New York City oh, a few times a year as well. So, and I um, have started writing some of my experiences down too. So we're sort of working on putting a book together that can help people f see themselves in what I do. Oh, how exciting. Yeah, because exciting. I just didn't, I never wanted to be other. Um, and I have a regular life, you know. And I, you're not weird. I'm not weird. Well, and you're not weird. <laughs> it's kind of disappointing. <laughs> Maybe I am a little weird. I like weird people. I think that's the thing about being an empath, too. You know, there's some people that an empath might come across that are look really good on the outside and I will give those people a wide berth but I also have you know people in my life that probably are weird but I don't see it because I'm reading with my heart you know oh that's beautiful yeah so I'm trying to raise my children to also be completely comfortable with their intuition um, because that is something that I know a lot about and I figure if you chose me to be your mom it's kind of part of the package anyway so they have a lot of their friends over um, oftentimes after school and I remember one time um, my older son yelled from the other room mom you know th this friend wants to, wants to know how you know you're a psychic and so I gave my first little kids class to a group of six boys second to fourth grade and it was amazing because they still actually really understand what it is. They use a lot of Star Wars metaphors <laughs> to explain it, like, oh, that's the Force, or, you know. <laughs> They're the Force. Yeah, that's, um, but, that's you know, it, we all really do get this. It's just under the surface. And anybody can do it. Absolutely anybody can do it. 
Susan, so, it's been awesome. Thank, thank you, Thank you so much for just helping us tune in and listen to that little voice. It's my pleasure. Well, and thank you for watching The Power of One. I am so glad that you tuned in today. And I really hope that we started to give you some tools to listen to your intuition, that little voice in your head. You're not weird, you're not crazy. There's other people out there that are tuning in and they're able to really live a much more empowered life. So hopefully we'll see you next time on The Power of One.